This episode of A Coal for Your Soul contains coarse language and scenes that may not be suitable for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Look at this place. The pictures online didn't do this city justice. It looks so clean and welcoming. I can see why Portheim was voted in the top five of safest cities to live last year. <sighs> if it weren't for that incident, it may have made number one this year. What incident? Oh, it's nothing to worry about. So what do you think, kiddo? Like the look of our new home? Well, we haven't got to the house yet, but yeah, it looks nice. Oh look! Your school's just over there! Whoa! It looks so big! I hope I don't get lost. Oh, don't worry too much. Everyone feels like that at first. Give it a week or two and you'll be able to walk that place blindfolded. Although, please don't attempt that. It wouldn't be good for you to bring a bone before the holidays. Oh, I can already imagine how beautiful these streets will look soon. Covered in snow and lights. Can we decorate the new house for winter? We'll see. That means no. Matt, did you see your new school? See one school, you've seen them all. Nothing to get excited over. Well, I'm looking forward to going to a new school. New school means new friends. See, Matt? Some excitement wouldn't go amiss. Exactly. This is an adventure. No. An actual adventure will be climbing a mountain or seeing another country, learning about a new culture. But this? This is just swapping one house you two won't spend time in for another. Less of the attitude, young man. Did I say anything untrue? <sighs> Matt, please. This is a good day. Let's not ruin it with the sour tone, okay? Oh, so I'm just supposed to keep my thoughts to myself. My feelings aren't worth listening to unless they match up to what you two want to hear. Why are you trying to make this about you, Matt? If this was even a small percentage about me, none of this would be happening. Matt, this move is a good thing. Yeah, for your careers. How long before you're practically living in your offices and making excuses not to come home? <sighs> I know this is hard for you, Matt. But we promise that after a brief adjustment, everything will fall into place. And you'll see that you and Jamie are our priorities. This move is good for all of us. <laughs> you know... They only adopted you to make themselves look good in front of their bosses, right? That is enough! Whatever. Uh, how long till we get to the new house? Soon. We'll be there soon. It's just at the top of the hill. Jamie, please don't listen to what Matt said. He's just lashing out because of the move. We all love you. You are a part of this family in every sense of the word. I know. I love you too. All right, home sweet home. All right, everyone grab a box and let's get this stuff unpacked. Hey, uh, Matt? <laughs> Matt? Matthew! Don't you ever call me Matthew, you little brat. Got it? Well, I had to say something to get your attention. And? What do you want? I just wanted to know what you meant earlier. About why they adopted you? No, about the decorations. You said Dad meant no when he said we'd see. Oh, that. Well, kid, welcome to the first Acker family tradition since you're apparently sticking around. You see, when they say we'll see, it always turns into, I'm sorry, but something came up. And it never happens. Well, maybe this time it'll happen. Oh, Jamie. Poor, naive Jamie. I used to have that hope. It'll die soon. Someone's staring at us. Huh? Hello! Oh, uh, hey, strange girl. You new around here? Yeah, we just moved here, unfortunately. I'm Matt, and you are? Call me Cindy. I'm Jamie. So, you're the new souls trying to tame the Reaper house. Wonder if you'll succeed, or fall prey. R Reaper? Huh? Like, the Grim Reaper? Wait, you both don't know. Kids, come on inside. You need to pick your rooms. Don't let that big beautiful house fool you. Up until a little while ago, it was home to a serial killer. Our very own Red River Reaper. Wait, a real serial killer? This boring city had a serial killer. Mm-hmm. Got caught and is in jail now. But who knows what he got up to in his house? How many more victims do we not know about? Kids! Well, I'll let you both get settled in. Enjoy the Reaper house. And listen for the restless spirits between the walls.
Do you think, are there really spirits in the walls? Of course there is. Angry spirits, desperate for revenge. All they're waiting for is the perfect moment to grab you and drag you to hell to suffer for all eternity. Ha! Matthew Francis Acker! Ugh, stupid little shit. Of course ghosts aren't real. Jamie, I don't want to be late on my first day. It's already gonna suck ass going into the semester halfway through. At least we have each other, right? Right, because that's what every senior wants. A 14-year-old freshman hanging around like a little leech. I'm not a leech! Then why do I feel like the life has been sucked out of me every time you're around? Maybe that's a you problem. Yeah, you are the problem. Well, whatever. I'm sure you'll make new friends. You think so? Yeah, just don't talk and you'll be fine. Why, you little brat! <laughs> Yo! You survived your first night at the Reaper house! Any ghouls try to eat you? Oh, hey Cindy. You shouldn't make up stories, you know. Uh, who is making up stories? You are. Mom said there's no ghosts. Of course she did. That's what parents say to make you feel better right before the ghosts kill you in your sleep. That's not true. Okay, lay off. I don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night when they have nightmares about ghosts ripping their flesh off their body. What? You're both jerks. Where are you going, Jay? The ghosts are hungry for your little spaghetti arms. Shut up! <laughs> it's so nice seeing siblings get along. My sister and I... Jamie never... isn't my sibling. They are an inconvenience. Huh? My parents adopted them last year. Oh. I just thought... Well, you act so much like real siblings. Well, we aren't. Uh, sorry. Uh, hey, mind if I walk with you to the bus stop? 
Sure, I guess. Great! I can introduce you to Ian, too. Ian? Yeah, he's one of my friends. Lives in the house just up the street. It's on the way to the bus stop, so we always meet up and ride down the hill together. I see. <laughs> Are you nervous? What? No, I just... I'm not good at making friends. Jamie is the charismatic one. Relax. You've already got one new friend. Besides, Ian is chill. He'll like you too. Hurry up, Matt. I thought you didn't want to be late. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Serious, though. What's it like inside the Reaper house? Is it creepy? Nah, I mean, he basically just moved boxes around all day and set up beds. Haven't had much time to explore, but it's like... old looking? Definitely has some horror movie vibes. Nice! You have to invite me over! Huh? I want to see inside? I don't know. Why not? Your parents don't want you bringing girls home? No, they don't care about that. It's just, well, they aren't done moving in. So? I can help you unpack. You're very tenacious, aren't you? Mm-hmm. It's one of my finer qualities. Fine. But give me a couple days to get settled in. Boo! Fine! But if you don't invite me over by the end of the week, I'll tell everyone you dance in your teddy bear jammies. Wait, what? <laughs> Better get curtains up on those windows, neighbor. Th they were a Christmas present from my grandmother. Besides, it's not dancing, it's, it's exercise. Okay, sugar plum fairy. Whatever you say. What are you two talking about? Nothing. But your face is all red. Hey! That's Ian! Who's that? Ian! Hey, Sims! <sighs> are these the new kids? Mm-hmm. Ian, meet Matt and Jamie. Hey. The name's Ian. Welcome to Portheim. Uh... I'm Jamie. This is my brother, Matt. I'm not... Ugh, never mind. Nice to meet you, Jamie. Are you in middle school? I'm actually a freshman. <laughs> really? How old are you? You look a little young. I just turned 14. 14? But then you'd be in your last year of middle school, wouldn't you? This little turd skipped a year because they're a nerd who spent all their time studying instead of having fun. I was pretty limited in what I could do, Matt. I didn't have the same opportunities as you. Yeah, well... I think it's great, Jamie. You must be pretty smart. I am. Despite what some people say. I didn't say you weren't smart. I just think you're an annoying suck-up with no friends. Other than your precious books, of course. Why are you so mean to me? What? I... So, um... You're both going to love Portheim Prep. Uh, the teachers are great, uh, right, Sint? Oh, yeah. They're the best. And if you like reading, there's a wicked library. I can show you when we get there. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Race you to the bus stop? That's lame. Oh, come on. If you win, I'll buy you a brownie at the cafeteria. A brownie? With sprinkles. You're on. I was just kidding around. Ah. <sighs> I don't know how to do this brother stuff. Step sibling? I thought the sibling. Ah, that's a big change. No shit. And then my dad got a new job, so it was suddenly new sibling, new town, new house. Shit, man. That's rough. That's whatever. Just need to make it through next year, and then I can get the hell out of this place and back where I belong. Hey, Portheim isn't all that bad. Maybe. You'll end up liking it here. Maybe. Hey! Hurry up, you two! The bus is coming! Oh shit, come on! <laughs> How long is the bus ride down the hill? It's... Mm, about 15 minutes. Are you cold, Jamie? Yeah. I told you the dress warmer. Here, you can wear my scarf. Thanks. Make sure you wear yours tomorrow. I will. Okay, kids, money's on the countertop, pizza's ordered, and on the way. We have our cells if you need us. Please only call if it's an emergency. Whoa, you two look so fancy. Yeah. Too fancy for it to be some quick meet and greet? No, we already told you this would be a late night event. All departments, shareholders, it's a big thing. Well, I didn't agree to babysit Jamie all night. I have plans. I don't need a sitter. See? They're not a baby. Problem solved, they can look after the house and I can go out. 
sweetheart, I really need you to put this into perspective. We're asking you to stay in and have some pizza with your sibling. It's not like we're asking to climb Mount Everest. Though, it really wasn't all that difficult to... What? Uh, it's not about what you're asking of me. You made me think you weren't going to be out all night. That's the difference. I made plans. Uh, Matt, I'm sorry that you felt that there was a lack of communication, but your plans can be changed. This can't. Besides, it's not so important, is it? You'll see your friends tomorrow anyway. Won't you see the same co-workers tomorrow? Okay, okay. Before this turns into another argument. Matt, just call your friends and see if they want to come over. What? Darling, we really don't have time to be going in circles with this. But... <sighs> Fine. Matthew, you promise me you will stay here with Jamie until we come home? I promise. And promise me that you and your friends will behave. I don't want to come back to find this place in a mess. I promise. And if your friends can't obey the rules of this house, you're willing to face the consequences? Yes, you know, a little bit of faith would be nice, Dad. We do have faith in you, we just don't really know your friends yet. Well, if we were still at my actual home, you'd already know my friends <laughs> then. Our Schuber is here. Be good, both of you. We love you. Love you both. Love you. I'm gonna call Cindy. Let me know when the pizza's here. Reaper boy, what's up? Change of plans. Got stuck at the house and have to look after Jamie, but if you and Ian promise to behave, you can come over here. Matt, you're offering to let me into the Reaper house. I don't organ for that chance. Cindy? Okay, okay, I promise. Goes without saying, I'll be good. Okay, good. Pizza's here. Gotta go. Call Ian and let him know. Will do. Want me to bring my pentagram and spirit awards? In case the ghosts get aggressive. <laughs> you know what? I think we'll survive without him. Hey guys, sorry about changing plans last minute. Don't worry about it, Matt. You can't help your parents having to work. It's not really work. Yeah, the people they work with will be there, but it's just a big party. Whoa, look at this place! Uh, hey, Reese, right? Yep, that's me. Hope you don't mind me inviting him. Of course not. The more the merrier, right? Hey, where's Cindy? I thought I heard her just before I opened the door. Oh. Uh... She's creeping outside. Ian, translation? She's never gotten this close to the house, wants to take it all in, probably getting photos for her Reaper house scrapbook, yada yada yada. <laughs> Excuse you, I don't have a scrapbook. Not yet, anyway. Well, take it all in, Cindy. Is it everything you hoped it would be? It's amazing! The Reaper really lived here. I can feel his presence still clinging here. Funny how you don't feel the presence of Mr. and Mrs. Feldman. You know, the couple that lived here longer than the Reaper ever did. And, uh, died here? <gasps> A chill just ran up my spine! Could it be one of the victims? Sins. You're standing in an open doorway and it's December. Just get inside already, please. Oh, yeah. So, ready for the tour? <laughs> Lead the way. Hey, so where's Jamie? Ugh, little genius is working on their homework. Want to get caught up on stuff they missed because of the move. <laughs> what a nerd. Hey, Jamie, we're on a house tour. Take a break and join us. Join you on a tour of my own house? <laughs> I suppose it does sound weird when faced like that. Come on, there must be some things even you haven't seen yet. Well, yeah, we are still moving in. So? Where have you not seen yet? Um, I haven't been to the attic or the basement. The basement? Matt, show us the basement. I bet there's a ton of Reaper secrets down there. Uh, doubtful. Remember, my brother worked on the case. They cleared everything that could be used in his prosecution out of the house. If there were anything interesting, it's in an evidence locker at the station. Well, Ian, maybe I should stop calling you Reaper Boy. Because you're seriously killing the mood. Just being realistic, Cindy. Well, there are some boxes down there that don't belong to us. My parents haven't looked through them, so maybe there is something interesting in there. Like what? Probably some knickknacks or clothes. Hardly the stuff of nightmares. Look, if you're going to suck the fun out of all of this, why don't you and Reese stay up here then? Hey, why am I being punished? I want to see the murder basement. Calm down, Reese. Ian? Are you coming or staying up here like a grump? Fine, I'll tag along. Uh, 
Uh, but if I see boxes of ugly shirts or junk developments left behind, I'm not going to hold back on the I told you so's. Why do we need to go see the basement? Because that's definitely where the Reaper hid all the bodies. What? What's wrong? You scared? Guess you could stay up here like a little wuss. I... I'm not scared. Right. Can we just hurry up and see the basement? Please just be gentle. Please just be gentle. Hi. It's okay, Jamie. I'll protect you. This house doesn't actually have bodies buried in the basement, does it? Oh, yeah. This house is totally haunted. Bodies in the basement, bodies in the wall, bodies everywhere. Hmm. <laughs> Definitely getting horror movie vibes already. Has there ever been a basement that didn't give off those vibes, though? Watch your step. The boxes that aren't ours are just over there in the corner. You doing okay, Jamie? Yeah, I I'm fine. Just the basement seems a lot the smaller compared to the rest of the house. Well, it's not ugly clothes. Halloween decorations in this box. Oh, Christmas ones here. Christmas decorations? Now we can definitely convince Mom and Dad to decorate. They don't even need to buy new stuff. Like I told you, Jamie, they won't do it. They'll be too busy like they've always been for the last 17 years. Hey, hey, hey! Looks like Cindy's Christmas came early. I found a devil statue! Ugh! I told you a thousand times, Reese. I don't worship the devil. You don't, but maybe the Reaper did. That... that doesn't look like a devil. Let me see. Hmm. I know this statue. I'm almost positive it's... Look at this mess, Reese. Did you have to dump everything out of the box? Uh, how else would I have found that little statue otherwise? It's not a big deal. We can just throw it all back in. Cindy, you've got a weird look on your face. What is it? Is it a devil? No, I I think it could be a depiction of Krampus. Krampus? Short version, it's a dark deity who accompanies Saint Nicholas. Oh, Santa. Santa would give gifts to the good children, while Krampus would punish the badly behaved children. Punish? How? He would give children coal instead of gifts, and if the kids were extra bad, he'd spank them with birch rods. So, just fairy tale nonsense to scare children. But why would the Reaper have this? It's so freaky. You're not scared of Krampus, are you, Jamie? What? No. Yeah, I mean, only bad kids should be scared. Have you done something wrong? You know I haven't. Maybe we should save Krampus to trouble. What are you doing? Let me go! You heard them, Reese. Let's let them go. Into the box! No! <laughs> shut it tight! No! No, don't! Don't shut it! Please! Ah, ah. Quickly, everyone out. Let's lock them in the basement. Let me out! Let me out! Matt! Matt, open the door! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> let me out! Let me out! Let me out! Listen to how scared they are. We should let them out. Matt, what? move! Here. <laughs> Look, they're crying! Oh, man, I need a photo of this. <gasps> hey, give it back! Ah! What the hell? How could you just leave me down there? I hate you! Well, the feeling is mutual, you life-ruining little fuck! <sighs> Don't touch my laptop, asswipe! Guys, we need to leave. It's just getting good! Now! Yeah, sorry. Better leave so you don't witness a murder. You should go with them, Matt. I'd rather be on my own again than ever see you again for the rest of my life. It's my house. You go. Go find a family that actually wants you. Ugh, I hate you, Jamie. I'd have left you down there until New Year if I could. <laughs> Do you think they managed to bond while we were gone? I hope so. If we aren't home too late, they should still be up. We'll probably get more detail out of Jamie than we will with Matt. That boy hardly talks to us anymore. But let's see how tonight went. Maybe we will be pleasantly surprised. I hope Jamie doesn't feel bad we didn't let them invite a friend over after we let Matt bring his over. If we'd had more time, we would have. It would have been too late for Jamie's new friend. Sally... Sasha? Sarah. 
Sarah, that's it. Jamie said she lives on the other side of the city, but maybe this weekend Jamie can have her over? I think that would be nice. Matthew? Jamie? Jamie? Love you still up? Jamie? Is everything okay? Uh, I'm just tired. I'll, I'll see you in the morning. Jamie, it's okay. We're home now. If something happened, you can talk to us. You don't have to open the door, but please don't shut us out. We'll always be here for you. We love you. Jamie, what's happened? <sighs> I really did a number on my shit. Are you proud of yourself? What? How could you have been so cruel? Me? Cruel? Look what they did to my stuff! My laptop and my phone are completely busted! Don't change the subject! It's the same subject. They destroyed my stuff because they couldn't take a joke. A, a joke, Matthew? A joke? You think what you did to that poor child was a joke? It was a joke! No, it wasn't! Do you see any of us laughing? They're traumatized! They're just exaggerating for the attention. Just take some responsibility for your stupid decisions for once in your goddamn life, Matthew! If I actually did something severely wrong, I would. Jeez, you two are acting like I killed someone. It was just a prank. Uh, Jamie has a severe phobia of small spaces, Matt. And for good reason, too. You know how the police found them. What? No, I don't. What if they had a panic attack and collapsed? What would you have done? Would you still be laughing or thinking about your things? How was I supposed to know they were claustrophobic? You didn't tell me any- If you'd actually tried to get to know them, maybe you would have known. But no. Ever since we started looking into the adoption process, you insisted on making them your enemy for no reason. Look at my phone and laptop. They've made an enemy of me now. What is wrong with you? We raised you to be respectful and kind, but instead, you seem to care more about things than how you've actually treated a member of this family. We... We almost don't recognize you anymore, Matt. Talk to us, Matt. Why are you so angry all the time? <laughs> you two are unbelievable. I tried to talk to you, but you shut the conversation down when you can't handle it or don't like what I have to say. What we want is for you to apologize to Jamie. Adam. We can't get distracted from the issue at hand, Holly. Everything else can wait until the morning when we've had a night's rest. You're right. Matt, you must see that what you did was an awful thing. Regardless of the intent. Apologize to Jamie. St. Jamie wins again. Haven't you heard of knocking? I was ordered to apologize, not to be polite. Oh wow, it's going great so far. Just shut up and listen, turd. Matt? I'm so, so sorry for playing the prank on you and that it made you cry like a sissy. That it? Suppose it is. Now it's your turn. My turn? Yeah. Now it's your turn to apologize for breaking my stuff. They'll be paying to replace them, by the way. No, they won't. What? You promised you'd face the consequences if you or your friends broke the rules of this house. As far as I'm concerned, what you did is in need of a consequence. You're grounded. You cannot be serious! Jamie destroyed my stuff! Jamie is also grounded for that. However, if you want a new phone, you'll have to buy a new one for yourself. And my schoolwork? I need my laptop. My computer in the home office will suffice. Problem solved. Now get to bed, both of you. Oh, Matt? What? Hate you too. Hey, Mitt. Are you alright? Things got, uh, a bit intense last night. You missed the worst of it. My parents grounded me. Can you believe it? That little pissant destroys all my shit and I get punished? Yeesh, did they ground Jamie too? Yeah, but that's not the point. I did nothing wrong. No one told me the little shit is claustrophobic. How was I supposed to know? You couldn't have known. None of us did. It's completely unfair. Right. And, get this, my parents are making me replace all the stuff Jamie destroyed. So if I want to get a new phone, I have to buy it myself. Seriously? Yep. How does that make any sense? Because it's my fault. 
It's always my fucking fault. Jamie is perfect. Jamie is a little angel. Jamie can't possibly do anything wrong. Sounds like Jamie needs to be taught a lesson. I wish. If I pull another prank on them, my parents will kill me. What about Cindy? Me? Cindy? What, what do you expect me to do? You know, your spells. Shh! Spells? I told you not to say anything about that, Reese. What does that mean, spells? Like, magic? Oh uh, yeah, uh, Cindy here believes she's a witch. Shut up, Ian. A witch? I, uh, um, am Wiccan, actually. I don't know what that is. Well, okay. So, when people say witch, they think old, ugly, green-skinned, warty hags, or devil worshippers. But that's not what I am at all. I believe in the forces of nature, and yes, believe in magic, but I don't like sacrifice babies or animals or anything like that. I, uh, I see. Cindy is a super powerful witch. She helped me pass math by casting a spell. <sighs> yeah, a spell called studying. So you could maybe curse Jamie or something? No, absolutely not. I don't deal in curses. You can't seriously believe this nonsense? It's ridiculous. I don't know. I mean, if we can get back at Jamie through a spell or whatever, then why not? If it doesn't work, then whatever. I don't curse people, mate. Okay, so what can you do? I don't know. I'm I'm not really that comfortable with using my power to do anything to Jamie. I mean, we locked them in the basement. Yeah, it sucks about your stuff, but maybe we deserved it. We? Did Jamie smash your phone and laptop too? Because from where I'm standing, I am the only one who got what I deserved. If you don't want to help, then fine. I don't give a shit, but I'm going to punch the little asshole with or without you. Mitt. Oh, just do the spell, sense. It's not going to work anyways. I know you don't believe, Ian, but please, don't belittle my religion like this. Yeah, uh, sorry. Wouldn't want to upset the gods and goddesses. You can be a real prick sometimes, you know. <sighs> okay. Fine. What do you want me to do? Is there some way of, I don't know, making someone else beat Jamie's ass? It has to be clear that we weren't involved. You want someone to beat up Jamie? Isn't that a bit harsh? The little shit deserves so much worse for ruining my life. A little temporary pain is merciful compared to the pain they have inflicted upon me. Mitt, they are just a kid. A kid who wanted a family. This, this isn't right. Maybe we can just, uh, scare Jamie. I can't believe you are taking Jamie's side. Fucking typical. I'm not taking a squirt side. I... I would be okay with scaring Jamie. They better piss their pants then. A summoning spell. Huh? I can... um... summon a deity to haunt them for a night? A deity. <laughs> Lame. Great, now we're talking about ghosts. Like they're real. Not a ghost. A deity. Like... A god? Mm-hmm. Supernatural being. What a god trick, Jamie. Aren't they supposed to be benevolent? Doesn't matter. This is all rubbish anyways. What about that demon Santa? Huh? You know, that decoration we found in the basement. Krampus? That's the guy! I am not summoning Krampus. Of course you're not, because he's not real! No, wait, I like that idea. You said he uses, what was it? Birch rods? So we summon Krampus, and Jamie gets their ass whipped by Evil Santa. Did you hear what you just said? Evil Santa! I'm not messing with dark deities. Come on, Cindy, what's the worst that can happen? Jamie gets a red butt from being spanked by some birch. Revenge accomplished. Nuh-uh. No way. Come on, I'll, I'll buy you whatever you want with my Christmas money. How much are we talking? My parents neglect me during the year and try to buy my love back during Christmas. So... A lot. Hmm... Okay. Yes! But, there's no refunds if this summoning spell doesn't work. Caprende? Understood. I will have to gather some supplies, but let's all meet at the gymnasium at lunch. We can summon Krampus there. I can't believe I just said that. This episode was written by Carrie Murphy and Jenna Oliver. Starring the voice talents of... Hi, I'm Logan Fletcher, and I voice Matthew Acker. Z Smith as Jamie Acker. Whitney Holland as Cindy Cartwright. Alice Himora as Holly Acker. Oliver Smith as Adam Acker. Terrace Griffin as Ian Parker. Roscoe Brayman as Reese Anderson. 
with music by Key Garland. Hello, this is Jenna from Wolf and Magpie Media. Thanks so much for listening to episode one of A Coal for Your Soul. Episode two will be posted Monday, December 12th, and episode three will go up on Monday, December 19th. On December 26th, we'll be posting a full feature-length version, which is all three episodes together in one, completely uninterrupted. If you enjoyed A Coal for Your Soul, Episode 1, please consider donating to our Ko-fi account, ko-fi.com slash wolfmagpiemedia. If you are unable to donate at this time, that is totally okay. Just give us a like, comment, a share, a positive review. Everything helps. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you Monday, December 12th for Episode 2.